case, um, there have been mostly negatives that actually help me to find my positives, which means that I would actually attribute my empowered voice to mostly to stress and to loss. And uh, thirdly, I think heartbreak was a, a major one for me as well. So every time I had these encountered like major disappointments, struggles or obstacles like this is actually where i found myself in a position where i started to question who am i what do i stand for what's important to me what do i want to bring out into the world what matters most like um especially loss was a big one because one of my high school friends passed away a few years back uh, she was my age and it was a major eye-opener for me in the sense that, you know, life is temporary. We can, you know, anything can happen at any time. Uh, she was still full of life and she was so loved. Um, and to see someone leave so soon really made me realize I'm not going to squander my life. I want to do something with it. I want to live it fully. I don't want to just let time pass by. I don't want to sit and, you know, wait for it to be over, let's say, or be unhappy or ungrateful in any way. So I, I just, it made me really shift my mind to, um, to take action and to start living on purpose. Well, I've had like multiple moments like that in my life, actually, because Somehow I always found ways to make myself super uncomfortable or uh, very extremely pushed to change because I never changed just because I wanted to. I'm more of, I, I sort of always waited until the moment where I couldn't live any longer in this way. Like I, was be, I would be too stressed or too sick or too emotionally worn out or like I would be too sad or I would, I've even had like some sort of anxiety uh, attacks at times where I was just, I just knew I was doing something completely wrong, but I couldn't figure out what. And pushing myself over the edge every time sort of made me come to a point where uh, a friend of mine told me maybe you should check out this mindfulness concept a bit more and dive into this. Uh, live more mindfully, try to take more breathers into your you know, daily life. So my biggest like changing, pivoting moment, I'd say, was when I first started to try meditation. Uh, she sent me to a site from Tara Brach. Um, and Tara Brach is amazing at, you know, like just guiding you through a meditation, especially if you've never done it before. So I, my first experience was so beautiful. I just sat there, I, had, I was guided into this deep body re relaxation, and then she guided me all the way from the top of my head to you know all the way down. But I remember she focused specifically on the heart area and just bringing my attention there made me cry so much that I realized, oh my God, I am so out of touch with what's important to me you know, with my emotions, with, you know, my, who I am. And that's really for me a moment where I realized, okay, I can't live this out of alignment anymore. I want to move into a space where I can actually integrate. Life is not just lived up here. I was just way too much up here, you know, living very much um, according to the expectations other people had of me, even if it was just in work, it was maybe also in friendship, in relationships, fearing, fearing maybe what other people would think of me if I do things differently. And at some point I just realized, okay, no, I'm not gonna live according to the rules or set of um, yeah, expectations that other people have on me. And I'm gonna change. And, and this is really like that first moment of meditation where I realized I was so out of touch with my own body that I realized, okay, I need to get my body into the picture again. It's not just about my head. I'm a human being, a whole being, and I need every part of me to, to be able to contribute to my life and to make my life beautiful and uh, yeah, worth living. So that's 
when I really started to change and make big decisions because that wasn't possible before that because I was too anxious and stressed. So the big decisions only started being made after I felt that I had the bodily power, the mind space, the mind space, uh, and the faith to do so. So that's really when I started to move abroad, explore new hobbies. You know, dancing became a major part of my life. Um, and many other things followed from that. So then I became like this individual traveler, solo traveler, which I, I before that much feared, you know, like I was like waiting for a partner to be able to travel. Like if I had a boyfriend, I travel, I do all this cool stuff, but I didn't have a boyfriend. So I was just waiting and not living <laughs> until, you know, that and, that, and then I was just like, okay, wait, I still can do this. I don't need to wait for this boyfriend to show up in order to get my life together and to move abroad and to do the things that excite me and to go to festivals and to go to movies and to go to dinners and even if there's not somebody holding my hand I can still hold my own hand and do the things that I love to do the most and this is what I've started doing since and this has been massive game changer of course uh, in terms of how I experience myself people around me and my life and now I'm in paradise Valley. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the first advice I give myself back then is don't take yourself too seriously. Because I have been pushing myself so hard in all the wrong directions. And um, by taking myself very seriously and also my, my responsibilities, my work, and my clients, it's good up until a certain point, right? I love to be responsible and to stand for something, but you have to also be able to sometimes give yourself a breather, laugh a little about yourself, and not, you know, take life as a gen in general too seriously, too much. So that's one big one. Um, another one I would say is don't take things so personally. Other people don't really know who you are and they're just living their best lives or you know sometimes they are facing obstacles or hurdles and then they project that onto you you can meet all sorts of people or uh, you know on all uh, from all walks of life but that doesn't mean that you know everybody has um, yeah the best interest for you so sometimes people might say stuff to you that you'll feel really offended by you might even want to change your life you know, due to something somebody else said to you, which is a power that you shouldn't give to anyone, right? Never give someone else that power over you. So that's a big one too. And I can see you resonate. <laughs> and, um, and then the other advice that I'd like to give myself, um, I wrote one down, let me, ah, yes, of course. Uh, big one is, well, love yourself more. Uh, so you don't need that external validation from anybody outside of yourself. Focus not on getting love from external people, things, anything. Focus more on finding it inside of yourself and then bringing it where you go, expressing it. So I've really been trying to grasp love, right? Like it's something out there. Mm, oh, could you give it to me maybe? Or if I do like this, will I be loved? Or if I, you know, if I adjust myself enough, will I be loved? If I wear these clothes or look like that, would I be loved? And oftentimes, especially when it came to romantic partners, I would be like a chameleon almost. I would want to adjust completely in order to fit to their expectation or what I assumed their expectations of me were. And yeah, changing that, like no longer saying, okay, I need to be loved by someone. I need to be loved by me. And I need to do what makes me feel loved. Not loved, love. And then when you focus on that, all the other things sort of naturally come to you because you are in a different state, you're in a different place, you are loving and people love that. <laughs> so then you will also receive it back, but you no longer need it. You, you're like, thank you, and I welcome it, and I love it. But now I am already complete.
Yes, I am. This is my empowered voice.